Alright guys, welcome back to the garage once again for another video. This time we are still working on the CNC lathe conversion. The S10 is just sitting here um, in Corona land. Can't really do a whole lot if it was running, so might as well do something that's been sitting here and you've probably seen it in the background in every video with stuff piled up on it. So uh, CNC lathe conversion uh, well underway. <clears throat> so it's been sitting good man at least five years or so and I've just finally uh, got the itch to really get it running and get it usable and all that kind of stuff so um, I really like machine work I really like cars I really like machining parts for cars so uh, it really goes hand in hand with the whole DIY garage uh, theme so having said that um, I think I explained some of it in the previous videos. There's some things that has to be made, uh, machined, if you will. And since the CNC mill is not working right now, or it's kind of like this, um, we're, we 3D printed a lot of parts uh, for the lathe, and once uh, they're proofed out and everything works, then we'll duplicate it in aluminum. So until then, let us move on to that step of the project. Okay, so all the parts you see here, uh, the white parts I should say, are the ones that have been 3D printed. Um, all of these parts, uh, actually all of the parts are for the Z axis or the long axis on the lathe, the, the axis that moves this way. So this guy and these guys will mount, um, will mount something like this, um, one on each end, they mount under the saddle. The, the ball nut attaches uh, to this hole right here on both sides to give it a, um, a true zero backlash or as close to it as possible. These guys mount on the ends of the ball screw. Um, this particular one has the motor attached to it and it pretty much covers it. Let's get them installed on the lathe and see how it looks. Okay, just to give you an idea of how strong some of this 3D printed stuff is, this is actually nylon, which is uh, a little bit different than what you see most 3D printers. Um, but these holes, uh, I think you can see, yeah, you can see those holes there. Those holes are um, printed to the correct size so I can thread them, which is what I've been doing. And see, I, I can probably hold that. You just thread it like it's metal. And no, that's probably not the safest way to do it. Blah, 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 but that's how we're doing it. So everything here becomes a workbench. Um, any, everything here that's, uh, that's flat becomes a workbench because we're kind of crowded for space around here. But, You can see everything uh, it threads in nice it's a little bit tight because the nylon actually uh, when you thread it it swells up and then you take the tap out and it shrinks a little bit but it's fine we're not going to use this um, for a long-term fix uh, this is merely just to see that the design and the theory works and everything so we're gonna go ahead and start putting it together and see how everything looks all right get these started going together Alright, so there's that piece. I left the bolts really loose uh, just for alignment purposes. So then, it's time to get the stepper motor mount uh, put in place. Alright, I think we can get the motor mount put on here next. Now this is going to, this spacing is probably going to change a little bit. This is just what I had before. And most likely not going to use this setup again. But we're going to put it on there like it was. All right, we'll get this temporarily bolted in place.
get the motor mounted and see how it all looks. Okay, this this spacing is just the setup that it had before um, when it was when it was actually mounted up here. But I moved it down here to get it to get the cross slide some room because the cross slide uh, the way this mounted here was actually too high and the cross slide would hit it if it came back. So move the motor down and put a we'll put timing pulleys and a belt on it and uh, see how that does. Now next uh, we'll put the the um, z-axis ball nut mount on both ends of it and make sure it lines up when this thing is slid all the way over that ball nut should line up pretty good right there so we'll see how that goes now okay so there was a little bit of change of plans from the beginning of the video um, and this portion of the video is being filmed a few days later um, but what I did is I decided to uh, do away with the x-axis uh, arrangement that I had that I showed you earlier in the video where the motor was mounted uh, a little bit down low which would have used the timing belt and pulleys and whatnot and after some more measuring and some time spent on uh, or in Fusion 360 I came up with this um, particular piece here this is just uh, as you can see it's 3d printed more than anything for proof of concept um, to, you know to see that everything's gonna work and it goes in the x-axis like this and it's gonna simplify things quite a bit so um, the other part of that is is the bearing blocks on the front and the back of the z-axis um, I don't know if I said it earlier in the video but I kind of screwed that up no big deal um, that's the whole purpose of 3d printing it um, so that we don't spend the effort making it out of metal first if that makes any sense so the next step is to get the new updated CNC or um, CNC control cabinet box thing um, redone the last video I had showed you is going to be controlled under Mach 3 or Mach 4 I have licenses for both but I actually changed my mind and went to Centroid uh, Acorn control and I've already got it wired up and I'm getting ready to run a test program which I'll probably show you here in this video um, huge big difference super easy to work with um, grand total of about an hour of bench wiring and reading through diagrams and things and I've already got it working um, and I'm already familiar with Centroid I had it before uh, so and I really like the way that the software work and whatnot so I'm going to stick with that and maybe even convert the mill over to it as well. I haven't got quite that far yet, but we'll, we'll get to that point sooner or later. Anyways, let's check that part out. Okay, so here's the controller. Um, I'm in my office in the house where I do all of my video editing and stuff and things like this. But the controller is incredibly easy to use incredibly easy to wire and that is the the centroid acorn controller by the way um, so I'll show you what the control box looks like uh, right here so these are the two the stepper drivers the stepper motors are right here the acorn board is here the power supply for the acorn board is back here here's the relay panel and I'll try to put this where you can see everything. Okay, I think you can see all that. All right, so this is this is running on Windows 10, and it's just it's too easy. Okay, so the, there's the the CNC 12 software for the Acorn. So we'll run that. So it's establishing communications with the PC through this Cat5 cable. All right. So, we are going to reset it just to make sure everything's good. We're going to load the PON program, which is the, the tried and true, uh, the one that everybody uses for their, their YouTube videos. PON video or PON piece part right there. And then 
we're going to go to the graph so you can see what it's actually doing. That's showing the toolpath. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so now it's asking me to put tool number one in the machine, which the imaginary machine has tool number one. We'll hit cycle start. And there it is, it's running. So we'll expedite this a little bit. So we're running 200% of the program feed rate. And as you can see, the stepper motors are doing their thing. So we can take it, right now it's, it's programmed for the flood coolant and mist to, to come on automatically if, the, if it's in the program or if it's in that tool. So we can take it off of auto and we can turn it on. You'll hear the relay click. And you can see the green light come on. Turn it back off. It's going through the roughing portion of the program right now. Got Dixie down there checking on the wiring, make sure everything's okay. Supervisor Dixie in the house. She should be in the garage working on something, which she's supposed to be. Okay guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video on the build of the CNC lathe. We got a lot done this time around. Got the brackets 3D printed, got some things that I need to change electronics are proofed out and as you saw they are working correctly um, that is a huge step in the right direction so um, I may not get back on this for another week or so I got some parts that are on order that I'm kind of waiting on and uh, we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how that goes but I do have some video footage of the truck um, in the works almost done actually so that video will be coming up next as usual, thanks everybody for stopping by and checking out the video. If you haven't, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.